21st. We begin with our big story of the day. A jury is now deliberating in the trial of former Milwaukee police officer Michael Mattioli. He's accused of killing Joel Acevedo in April of 2020 after a party at Mattioli's home. Let's get to our Bruce Harrison, who has been following this story all week. He is live in the Milwaukee County Safety Building where the trial is being held. Bruce, what is the latest there? Hey, Simone, good afternoon. Well, there was a full courtroom this morning, <laughs> friends and family, both of Michael Mattioli as well as Joel Acevedo. And of course, in there as well, the jurors sitting quietly listening, some with stern expressions as they took in closing arguments from the state and the defense ahead of what is going to be a very big decision for them to make. Now, here's how this works. The state doesn't have to prove that Mattioli intended to kill Acevedo, just that he was reckless in causing his death. Prosecutor Paul Tiffin, in closing arguments today, told jurors Mattioli restraining Acevedo after a fight, putting weight on his back, was part of the reason Acevedo stopped breathing. Now, defense attorney Michael Hart argued Mattioli had the right to defend himself and friends in his home, and Acevedo, he called him the aggressor, high on cocaine and in poor health, dying essentially from his own poor choices. The picture you see is a man, Mr. Mattioli, who's angry, who's intoxicated, who has restrained and prevented Joel Acevedo from getting up, who didn't pay attention to what he was doing. But for the conduct of Mr. Mattioli, Mr. Acevedo would be alive. Think of it the other way. And that is, but for the conduct of Mr. Acevedo, Mr. Acevedo would be alive. The judge also allowed the state this morning to enter a lesser charge of second degree reckless homicide, meaning the state, while having to prove recklessness, does not have to prove that Michael Mattioli uh, acted with utter disregard for human life, something the jurors all have to consider now as well. And Simone will be here until there's a verdict. The jurors have been deliberating for about two hours at this point. Reporting live in Milwaukee, Bruce Harrison, TMJ4 News. Yeah, the jurors have a big decision on their hands. We'll wait for that verdict. Thank you, Bruce. Well, the Mattioli case took more than three years to get to trial. Legal experts say the lengthy delay is partially due to the felony case backlog stemming from the start of the pandemic. New court data shows nearly 1,500 felony cases are still a part of that backlog, just 83 fewer than at the start of the year. That means each felony court judge is handling an average of 93 more cases at a time compared to before the pandemic. The backlog problem started when COVID-19 hit the state and the court system was forced to shut down criminal case trials for several months. Meanwhile, homicides skyrocketed in the city. Retired Chief Judge Mary Trigiano says as cases piled up, so did staffing struggles. Every Stakeholder group seems to be down in staffing um, anywhere from 30 to 40 percent. And when you're trying to handle cases and figure out jury trials, you actually need more people than less to chip away at that backlog. Trishiano says a lack of resources remains the primary problem, despite a $14 million investment to attract and retain prosecutors and public defenders. And you can follow the latest on this trial of Michael Mattioli on air and also on our streaming services.